It's a warm but beautiful July day, and we're in Milan at the Milan Agricultural Experimental Station for the No-Till Field Day. More than 100 vendors and several thousand people came to Milan for the biannual event. But this is much more than a trade show. It's an important update on the latest research and techniques of modern farming. Well, the purpose of today's activities is to provide information from our research data to all our producers across the state, across the country, and around the world. They come here from all over every year to learn about no-till crop production here at the Milan Experiment Station. There's a lot of pressure here now. Multiple generations are possible. This year's field day was the biggest well, right yet, with 15 tours or subject areas presented. All of West Tennessee's major cash crops were represented, along with new information about a variety of issues from weed and pest control to warm season grasses, waterfowl, livestock, and forestry. It is definitely a learning experience. Our goal here on the experiment station is to conduct research ag related to help our farmers solve problems. Uh, the goal of the, the field day is to share that information with the producers. And this is just one way of many. We use print media, we use uh, other means to get the information out, but this is an opportunity for producers to come to the station, actually see the, the plots in the fields and visit with our scientists and our extension personnel firsthand. What we're uh, presenting here is some data on a uh, test that was done on harvest efficiency trying to determine when the best time for the farmer to get into the field and to harvest his corn at what moisture. And that ranges from anywhere, what we looked at is anywhere from 21% moisture all the way down below what they consider dry corn at 15%. One of the subjects that caught my attention was genetic engineering for pest and weed control. These new plants reduce the need for applied chemicals. The BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis. That is a soil bacterium that was found over a hundred years ago to be highly effective against caterpillar species. When it was sprayed on plants, they would die due to this soil bacterium being sprayed on the plants. Well, through genetic engineering, our technology is such that now this gene from the bacillus bacterium can be spliced into plant genes. It doesn't really change the plant and its productivity and it's not harmful to humans, but the gene itself is spliced into the plant gene. Every cell in the plant, whether it's corn or cotton or soybeans, tomato or potato, have the gene in it. And this gene then produces an endotoxin. It's a protein that when caterpillars feed on it, they have a basic insect gut. Humans have a acidic gut. When the insects feed on it, then it paralyzes the gut and kills the insect. It starves to death. So this BT gene has been incorporated into these field crops to provide protection against various pest species. What the public might not realize is that many of these same technologies, the genetic engineering, are allowing the genetic labs to develop pharmaceutical crops, these crops can produce the uh, primary ingredients for pharmaceuticals. That will make our drugs less expensive in the long run. They don't have to be generated strictly by chemicals. We've got plants out here in the field producing the basic ingredients for pharmaceuticals. So genetic engineering is really important for us these days. Along with the farming of traditional crops, there were tours covering the expanding operations of value-added agriculture and agritourism. Everybody's always looking for a way to make a buck. Uh, traditionally with agriculture, we think about corn, cotton, soybeans, beef cattle, dairies, what have you. And some folks are, are looking at some alternative sources, uh, fruits and vegetables, plastic culture strawberries, cut flowers, things like that. Where if everybody got into that business, it would, you know, we don't have a market for that, but there are niche markets around. And just looking at alternative ways to make additional income off the farm. Still the fulcrum about which field day turns is farming and a relatively new cultivation process called no-till. Well, no-till farming is a method of farming where we plant the seed uh, of a crop directly into the residue from the previous crop without any tillage of the soil. It was started back in the 50s and 60s as a means to control soil erosion. Since that time we found a lot of other benefits uh, and as a result now about 70% of the acres in Tennessee are farmed using no-till practices. So it's a, it is now the conventional system that we're using, uh, but it was begun as a means to control soil erosion. 
Other advantages farmers are finding with no-till include reduced labor cost, reduced soil compaction, and increased water infiltration. But even as the memories of America's Dust Bowl years fade, soil conservation remains a huge priority. Well, a lot of the problems with erosion, especially in our area, we have the soil types that are easily erodible, and on any slope whatsoever you could see some problems associated with that, and that was one of the main reasons for no-till to begin. No-till cultivation got off to a slow start. Conventional planters could not visualize tillage as weed control, and farm equipment technology had not matured to the process. Those problems have been mostly surpassed, and the field day participants were treated to demonstrations and up-close inspections of the latest no-till implements, many of which, on a good day, can provide the farmer with a single-pass operation. I've got a knife here that puts that anhydrous down or liquid nitrogen and puts it down under there about seven or eight inches in the ground and then it spreads it out about in a band about eight or ten inches wide and uh, you can put down a high rate of nitrogen up to 200 pounds of N per acre and come along and plant right over it if you put it down deep like that and spread it out and this knife lifts and loosens the seed bed and makes a makes a little ridge to plant on and they've got a this rolling cultivator that comes along behind it uh, pulls the soil back in and chops it up and finishes the seed bed and then the planter unit follows right behind that and uh, you do it with this operation we pull a anhydrous wagon or a nitrogen liquid nitrogen wagon right, right behind it and we fertilize it and build a seed bed and plant the seed all at one time but the soil has to be the condition of the soil has to be right to be able to do that if it's too wet we can lock up the planter units and make a strip and come back and and plant it a few hours later after the ground that strip dries out even though the equipment is getting bigger and more sophisticated, the classic questions never go out of style. Well, economy and uh, low cost, low maintenance. Try to save as much money as you can on a small operation. Yeah. I notice everyone's taking a look at the, uh, what the machine's done in the ground. What kind of things are you uh, checking with the measuring and everything? Well, you check to make sure you're getting good seed droppage, good coverage on it. You don't want to skip a whole lot of spots on it. Some of these, some of these ain't as good as others. Some of them are real good. Attention, Mullen Station 1 and Station 2 firemen. Respond to the Ag Museum. You have a tractor overturned, a woman trapped. A tractor overturned and a woman trapped. You also have a four-wheeler with a child trapped under it. Farm and home safety took center stage with a mock accident and demonstration by the Kentucky Department of Agriculture. If you watch how the accidents happen and learn how to prevent them, you can keep it from happening to you and your family. Safety is something other. We just have to take a few minutes to stop and think about it. It's real simple, but we've always taken it for granted. Ten years ago, you wouldn't have had a safety program at a field day like this. Now it's getting to be more common, and we had a couple hundred people stand here and watch us. So that's worth getting out. This demonstration left nothing to the imagination, from the proper way to make a 911 call to emergency personnel extracting and evacuating the victims. Dale Dobson says the program is making an impact. In 95, we had 50 agriculture-related fatalities that year. 13 of them as young adults under the age of 16. Farmers, the only occupation where we kill our children and make a living. Can't we do better than that? Yes, we can by simply teaching safety to our families. You now our children and grandchildren are our most valuable assets. In the year 2000, we was down to 15 deaths and nobody under 20. In the year 2002, we had 25. We're exactly half of what it was from the day we started to now. Is it worth our time? Is it worth your time? You're part of this team just by covering this. Watching the paramedics and emergency personnel was informative and exciting, but Dale's underlying message is about what each of us do day to day. It is your choices that you make, choices and decisions. It's your life, it's your family, it's your responsibility to put safety first. You're the ones going to live with it. Field Day was packed full of information and demonstrations for farmers of every kind. But there was also plenty to do for the entire family with a cookout, antique tractors and engines, cotton fashion show, horse show, and stock car races, to name a few. Field day research and information about the experiment station can be found on the web at mylan.tennessee.edu. Field day was begun in 1981. Uh, as I mentioned, in the early 50s and 60s, some of the no-till work was begun here on this station. 
Mr. Tom McCutcheon was the first superintendent here and he's been uh, the one that was responsible for starting the early no-till work. In the early 80s, they decided they had enough information, had perfected the technique enough to, to start sharing that with farmers, and so they decided to host a field day in 1981. It was intended to be a one-time event, but they had about 17, 1,800 people that showed up, which was pretty unheard of at that time. So between the exhibitors and the visitors, they asked to have it again. So in 82, uh, the field day was held again and it's been going continuously since that time up until 2002. Uh, in 2002, after 22 consecutive years, we made the decision to go to an every other year schedule. So we were off last year. This is our first year back. And I think that was probably a good move. Uh, it gave us a year to catch up on some work do some research, and this year we came back, uh, we had more information to talk about than we've, than we've ever had in the past.